Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about the importance of embodiment um, in our relationships, in our lives. Um, most of us um, uh, are traumatized, uh, go through life in a state that's constricted, wounded, uh, fearful of being hurt again. So we keep ourselves small and in a way we kind of close in on ourselves um, not really allowing any new information to penetrate, often not even present uh, for the lives that are happening, for the relationships that are going on in the now. Mm, uh, as a result, we, as I've spoken before, we interpret the information that comes to us, uh, what people are telling us, the way they're behaving, from our own own filters that are based on our past experiences, things that we've inherited, things that we've absorbed from our own um, family environments in which we were raised. Embodiment is actually living within our bodies, actually animating our bodies. That requires opening up, so from that constricted, closed-in space, to open up to receive the information. For that we need to be self-reliant, not afraid to be hurt. Understanding that pain is part of life and that we cannot guarantee anything about the future. Uh, to be so okay with what is, to be so okay in the present moment, knowing that we have enough resources within ourselves to deal with whatever arises to such an extent that we don't need to worry about it in advance. For that we also need to let go of particular images of how things should be or how relationships should be, that if we meet somebody and we enjoy their company, that it doesn't mean that we have to be together forever and ever. Or if we have spent a, s a certain amount of time with each other, having developed a relationship, if it falls apart, it doesn't mean that we've failed. It's just a normal flow of life. Things and people come in and out of our lives. It's a flow. We're weaving. Events are weaving in and out of our lives so that we get maximum experiences and impressions. So once again, embodiment. Embodiment means being in our bodies enough to feel and understand what's happening in the now actually being open to receive the sensory information. For that, we cannot be stuck in the past or we cannot be worrying about the future, nor can we be in a closed state so afraid to be hurt. We need to allow whatever experience is unfolding in the now, actually being present for whatever is, not foreseeing anything, but being in the now, embodiment, being in our body. We cannot be in our mind at the same time as in our body because when we're stuck in the future or in the past, we're not in our body. So when we allow sensory information, for example, touching, even pinching, right? Causing something that is a sensory um, information, drinking, eating, um, movement, mindful practices of any sort where we're actually present, where we're actually paying attention, taking a bite of food, feeling the crunchiness or the texture of it, sensing how it goes down our throat into the body, etc., etc. Or in a relationship, actually being for the conversation that's happening in the now, allowing ourselves to stay present through breath, allowing the other person to be exactly who they are, to say exactly what they're saying without us reacting and needing them to be something else. This is so important. When we are present in our bodies through breath, through sensory experience, we can then allow the other to be who they are. It's also about sovereignty, understanding what is ours and what is theirs. If somebody, for example, with whom we're in conversation is, is going through, you know, uh, an emotional experience, can we take a breath and recenter, understanding that what they're going through is theirs and that 
we are present in our body and our experience may be very different and allowing ourselves to have that experience that is different without blaming ourselves or feeling guilty or calling ourselves any names like selfish or uncaring. Embodiment is incredibly important for our relationships because most of us go through relationships not embodied, disembodied. We go through life disembodied because when we were traumatized as children, when something happened that hurt us, our adopt adaptive um, coping mechanisms are to to dissociate from the emotions that we cannot handle in the moment. So by the time we're grown-ups, we're just like all living through the mind, living in the mind, disembodied. The experience of living in our bodies is incredibly important, not only for healing our own traumas, but so that we can actually enjoy the relationships that we already have and be grateful for what is already happening this is another thing that I'm observing because we're so out of our bodies we are so attached to the images that we've that we have in our minds of how things should be we're so attached to that how it should be that we're not present for the relationships for the events that are happening in the present moment so a lot of our relationships get destroyed or don't unfold the way they, they have the potential to unfold because we cannot get out of the mental image and cannot be present for the beauty, beauty that's unfolding in the now. Receiving the information that's being directed at us. Actually being present in a relaxed state with a relaxed nervous system to allow what needs to happen to happen. So embodiment, living in our bodies, out of our minds. Our minds are beautiful tools, but our bodies receive 90% of information. Um, and it's really, really important for us to start inhabiting our bodies. And that starts with being present in the now. Through the breath, through relaxation, through bringing ourselves back to the present moment. What is happening in the now? If we're relating to somebody and they're saying something that feels like it might not be a material for a future, it doesn't mean that they don't have valuable information for us in the now. Our relationships are a source of enormous um, learning, healing, um, very useful information for us to understand who we are. They're our mirrors, they're our lessons. And when we um, interrupt them because of the fear that it's not something that can serve us in the future, it's a complete fabrication because we really don't know. Everything is happening in the present moment. Are we present in the now to give things a chance to teach us what they're here to teach us? So I hope that this gives you some food for thought. Uh, I welcome all your comments and I'll see you next time.